Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you a high-end makeup starter kit. A few weeks ago here on my channel, I uploaded a drugstore makeup starter kit and so many of you found it helpful, which makes me so happy. I love when I can help so many of you guys out. You guys left me a lot of sweet comments and a few of you asked me to do a high-end version. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Just like I mentioned in my last starter kit video, I know the makeup community and the makeup industry and the whole beauty world can be very overwhelming when it comes to new launches. I always say I feel like I can't keep up. Makeup literally launches faster than I could blink and I feel like it's overwhelming for someone who is seasoned in makeup and knows what they like, etc. I can't even imagine how a beginner in makeup or someone who is looking to start their beauty journey feels. So that is why I want to make these types of videos for you. I really want to make these videos to simplify the makeup shopping process for you. What I think is good, what brands are the best and I think are worth the money. So I'm going to be taking you guys in order of my makeup routine. That's the easiest way for me to share these products with you. Some categories only have one favorite and then other categories have a few. I have a few for like summer, winter, when my skin is more dry or more oily, just to give you guys all of the options. But in general, these are all of my high-end favorites. So I really hope that you guys enjoy seeing this video and find it helpful. If you have any high-end favorites, definitely make sure to leave your recommendations down below in the comments. And without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. If you guys are longtime subscribers and longtime viewers of mine, then I'm sure you're gonna be able to guess a lot of these products as I go along, step by step. So the first product I mention so much on my channel, and that is for brows, and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. If you guys are new to my channel, hi, my name is Jackie. I talk about my brow wiz a lot. I am absolutely obsessed with it, and it is my favorite makeup product of all time. This is definitely my favorite high-end brow product of all time. I just have found it so easy when I was a beginner this really helped me personally learn how to do my brows of course I went through that bad brow phase who hasn't but this really helped me learn the shape of my brows and how dark I like them and how much pressure to put down I feel like the brow pencil is very beginner friendly because the texture of it is perfect it's not very creamy and overly pigmented to where you're gonna get a super dark brow but it's not too dry and waxy either to where you have to press down really hard I just find the formula of this to be perfect Perfect. Again, very beginners friendly and if you are also seasoned in makeup and you haven't tried this, I definitely couldn't recommend this product enough. So definitely the brow is. It comes in a lot of different colors. If you have really light hair or really deep hair, there is a whole spectrum of brow colors and I personally wear the shade medium brown and sometimes I like to mix in the shade chocolate as well. So just a recommendation if you guys have similar hair color or brow color to mine. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and quickly mention my favorite eyeshadow palettes that are high-end. I talk about these to death here on my channel, so I'm so sorry if you guys are sick and tired of hearing about these, but when I like something and I think something is good, that's what I want to recommend to you guys. So the first formula, of course, are ABH palettes. I have four right here. I don't think one of the ones that I have is available anymore, and that is the Prism palette. And then the other formula of shadows that I love, love, love are the Tarte Tartlet palettes. Anastasia palettes are those palettes that are going to be very, very pink pigmented, they pack a huge punch of color. And I would say that you would have to be light-handed at first if you've never worked with an Anastasia palette in the past. I don't wanna talk about these too much because I do have other videos talking about Anastasia palettes on my channel. I recently just did a video comparing all of them. So if you guys wanna check that out for like which specific palette would be for you, definitely make sure to go check out that video as well. But as far as the formula goes, I just personally love how pigmented Anastasia shadows are. They pack a lot of punch and a lot of color really quickly. I don't feel like I have to spend a lot of time really building up the color, but with that being said, if you are a beginner, I would take your time when using these. I wouldn't pack your brush with color and put it on because I know I did that when I first got my Anastasia palette, which was the Modern Renaissance was my first one, and I made a mess out of my face. So definitely, I would go into these with caution, but once you get used to them, they have the most pigmented, buttery, and smooth formula and I just love them so much and I believe these retail from $42 to $45. And my second favorite formula of high-end palettes, like I said, are the Tarte Tartlet palettes. These are the two that I have in my collection and I use them all the time. So I have the Tartlet Toasted, which is going to be a little bit more on the warm tone side. I really love that one. If you guys know me, you know I love my warm tones. And then I also have the Tartlet in Bloom, which is going to be a little bit more on the neutral side. I feel like this would be a great 
event palette if you have a wedding or prom or if you just want an everyday eye look the tartlet and bloom is really great for that and I know there are some people that don't love the formula on these and I don't know why a lot of people call them like dry or that they don't blend I don't find that personally I really love the formula on these I would say that they're not necessarily dry I just feel like you have to take a little bit more time to build them up making them very beginners friendly I find it very hard to go overboard with these palettes but they do have enough pigment where I could still get a very glam look so the next category of products that I want to touch on is mascara and I actually don't have a high-end mascara to share with you guys today I cannot tell you the last time I purchased a high-end mascara I've been all about repurchasing my Maybelline and drugstore mascaras for years and years now I want to say the last time I used a high-end mascara was maybe like freshman or sophomore year of high school it's definitely been a while and I don't think it's fair for me to recommend one that I used years and years ago just because the formula could have changed or I wouldn't really like it anymore so I personally would say even though this is a high-end video I would stick to drugstore mascara I feel like drugstore mascara is just really really good really comparable to high-end mascara I personally don't feel like spending $25 or more on a mascara is necessarily worth it I feel like a lot of them look the same they essentially do the same thing so for me drugstore is the way to go for mascara so now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to talk about some of my absolute favorite products for my base and the first thing that I always do is start off with a primer water so of course I love these Smashbox photo finish primer water this has been a staple in my makeup routine for years and years at least three or four years now at least that I've gone through so many bottles again maybe like five or six bottles of this I know a lot of people think like what could that do it's just water in a bottle I truly believe that it's more than that ever since I started using this or just a spray underneath my makeup in general I feel like not only does it add an extra level of hydration but it also adds an extra level of a stick to my foundation and my other primers and everything like that I feel like ever since I started implementing something like the primer water into my makeup routine my makeup has just become that much more long-lasting it feels really refreshing on the skin and I just love this definitely a huge staple of mine if you guys have been looking into it but you're a little hesitant a little skeptical I totally can see why but trust me this is 100% worth it I will always continue to repurchase this I always like to stock up during like a Sephora sale or something like that and this is 100% worth it to me so let's go ahead and talk about face primer High-end face primers are something that I'm always so intrigued by. I love testing out new like complexion products and base products and I feel like high-end brands just do them really well. So I have three to talk to you guys about today. I would say my overall favorite high-end primer is the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. This is really that primer that is universal for all skin types. It's going to be really good and beneficial for everyone and it's definitely a hidden gem at Sephora. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. I believe that this is a Korean beauty brands and I feel like this was like touch and soul's one hit wonder I feel like if you have dry skin or oily skin or even if your skin is normal kind of right in between I feel like you all are going to really like this primer because it doesn't necessarily have any mattifying factors or any overly hydrating factors again it's just like that perfect right in the middle primer it kind of has a little bit of a serum -y feeling which I really like it feels really cooling and refreshing on the skin but it does does smooth out the skin it fills in your pores it smooths out any texture if you guys struggle with texture on your skin or acne or anything like that this is a really great smoothing primer I love this one this next primer here is the Smashbox photo finish foundation primer this is just the original one I do have the old packaging I know they did recently update the packaging so this isn't what it looks like anymore but I really love this again for just a day-to-day -day primer I feel like it's really smoothing and I did like this a lot more when my skin was more on the oily side this is oil free and I feel like it is a little bit more mattifying on the skin when I put this on it really smooths everything out but I also do see a big difference in like the shininess is completely gone it really mattifies the forehead nicely and it does have a little bit more of that thicker silicone consistency that I really liked when I had more oily skin this was my go-to primer for that and this last primer that I'm talking about today is for my dry skin babes out there this is 
is the Glossier Priming Moisturizer Buildable Hydrating Cream. This stuff is hydrating, you guys. I love this in the winter when my skin was really dry. At one point, it was so cold, my skin was literally just starting to flake. I felt like my skin was so tight. Makeup didn't look that great on top of it because everything just emphasized the dryness. I felt like I couldn't put enough of this on. It was so refreshing in the morning. It felt so nice on the skin underneath my makeup, and my makeup underneath always looked healthy and lively, and my skin never looked overly dry. Just like my skin had a glow to it, it really would break through with the luminosity as you wore it longer throughout the day. Overall, I just have to say, if your skin is more on the dry side, I definitely would recommend the Glossier Priming Moisturizer because it is so hydrating. <laughs> High-end foundation personally isn't something for me that I was always very into. I never really was willing to spend a lot of money on foundation just because I truly think the drugstore does foundation so well. I love all of my drugstore foundations. I'm wearing a mix of drugstore foundations today and I just think they look bomb and I don't want to spend a lot of money on foundation. So I have only tried one high-end foundation which is the Fenty Beauty Foundation. I do like this a lot and I do want to recommend it to you but only for those of you whose skin is normal to oily. I definitely think that if you are more on the dry side I don't think you're going to love this. This is a pretty mattifying foundation. It dries down really quick. Definitely has more of like a dry finish to it. Maybe you would be able to pull it off with like a super hydrating primer or something underneath. I'm trying to think of other high-end foundations off of the top of my head, but I genuinely haven't tried anything else but Fenty. I would just recommend going into Sephora or Ulta or watching like someone with dry skin's high-end foundation video. That could be very helpful as well. I absolutely love me some concealer. Concealer is one of those things that I just love to test out. Every single time a brand launches a new concealer, I get so excited. I just want them so bad, but I gotta have some self-control obviously or else I would probably buy every single one of them. But my absolute favorite concealer of all time is the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer. They're a multi-use sculpting concealer. I have mine in the shade Vanilla. I just love this concealer so much. It truly is my perfect concealer because it's full coverage, but it's not overly drying. It looks really great and healthy under the skin. I also do like this two spot conceal. It also comes in an abundance of different shades. They recently did just expand the shade range, so I'm sure there is something for you out there, but this just sits so beautifully under the eye. I personally do always set my concealer, so I'm not sure if you would be able to get away with it being unset, but if you are just looking for that concealer that is going to look beautiful under the eye, it's not going to look overly drying, and it's going to give you that really, really full coverage that everyone loves and everyone wants nowadays, I definitely would go for the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage. Like I said, so many different shades. You could use it to conceal, you could use it to contour and highlight if you get lighter and darker shades. Another thing that I love about it a lot is the packaging. I think the packaging is so luxurious. I love the size of it. It definitely is almost like a size of a foundation and it has uh, 0.50 fluid ounces. So it's like half the amount of foundation, which I think is a lot of product for concealer. But of course I couldn't talk about high-end concealers without mentioning the ever so famous Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I feel like this was one of the first super high coverage concealers to have a huge impact on the beauty industry. So many different concealers are now I, I don't want to say copied, but are definitely very inspired by this concealer with the large doe foot applicator, with the high, high coverage. I feel like this really shaped what the concealer world has turned into, and it is a really great concealer. I do personally prefer the Too Faced one over this. This is the concealer that I have on today, and I think it looks beautiful underneath the eye. I wear mine in the shade Light Neutral. Again, it comes in so many different shades, and you get 0.338 fluid ounces. If you guys want to see me comparing this to the Too Faced. I did do a concealer show down here on my channel a few months back, so you can definitely check out this video when you are done with this one. But I do prefer the Too Faced one. The Tarte one is still absolutely amazing. I would just say the only difference is that the Tarte one is a little bit more dry and just a little bit more heavy on the under eye, but it still is a really great concealer, something that I would definitely still want to recommend, of course, and something that I would personally continue to repurchase. This next concealer that I want to mention is going to be 
for those of you that want something a little bit maybe more hydrating, a little bit natural day to day in your makeup starter kit if you are more of like a natural makeup lover. I feel like you are going to really like the Fenty Beauty Concealer. To me this concealer has definitely been a little bit of a different release in a concealer than I feel like we have seen in a while. It's a skinny tube, it has a skinny applicator, it's really unique in that way. But it also is more on the fresh and natural side. It's not going to be as full coverage as something as the Tarte or the Too Faced, but I think that's good. A lot of people day to day just like a medium coverage concealer. I have worn this with full glam looks and you can build it up to be full coverage as well. But my favorite way to wear this concealer is day to day, just with a little bit of mascara or when I'm wearing more of a light makeup look. This looks so beautiful. It is so hydrating under the eye. You have a lot of playtime with this concealer and it also does build up really well. So I would say if something super full coverage like the Tarte or the Too Faced don't appeal for you, if you want something a little bit more fresh looking but still lasts throughout the day that gives a beautiful finish under the eye, I would say Fenty is your best bet and I wear this in the shade 185. When it comes to high-end powder, my recommendation would definitely be again the Fenty Beauty Powder. This is her Instamat Blotting Powder Universal. I really like this powder. I do have to say I like this a little bit more for touch up and blotting just like it says. When I, whenever I've tried setting my face with this, I feel like it's nice, but I don't feel like it's my favorite setting powder. I feel like this is the best for touch-ups and blotting. So this is what the powder looks like. It truly is a colorless powder. It works on a variety of different skin tones. This takes down shine so quickly, so easy, but it doesn't leave you looking overly powderly or overly matte. It's just like a really quick and easy touch-up powder, and I love the packaging on this as well. As far as setting powders do go, though, of course, I want to recommend the Laura Mercier powder. This powder was my baby back in the day when I was really oily, when I suffered from my makeup breaking down and nothing could keep my makeup on. This definitely would. I don't like this powder as much now that my skin is a little bit more normal to dry. So I feel like you would enjoy this the most if you do have more oily skin. I feel like if you are more on the dry side, this might be a little bit too powdery and a little bit too heavy on your skin unless you use it very, very sparingly. Just to keep it short and sweet, and I'm sure it's no surprise to you guys at all. When it comes to high-end bronzer, my only recommendation is Anastasia Powder Bronzers. I have mine in the shade Rosewood, but this bronzer comes in so many different shades, whether you're more fair, you're more deep skin, whether you have cool tone undertones, more golden undertones. I really love the variety of undertones and colors that this powder bronzer comes in. I truly feel like this bronzer is perfect for my skin when it comes to color as well as formula. The formula is so easy to work with. You can build it up to get a nice intense bronze or you could tap off your brush and lightly bronze the perimeter of your face. It's long lasting. This bronzer literally lasts all day. When I've worn my makeup for like 15, 16 hours, I still see the bronzer on my cheeks. It doesn't fade. It adds a nice warmth and definition to the skin. As you guys can see, this is the bronzer I'm wearing right now and it is the only high-end bronzer that I want to recommend to you guys today because it is bomb. It blends like a dream. It comes in so many different tones and I just love it. It's my baby and probably one of my favorite high-end products of all time. When it comes to high-end blushes, I 100% recommend Benefit. I think Benefit does cheek products so well, whether it's their bronzer or their blushes. I do like their bronzer. I wouldn't say Hoola is my favorite, but their blushes are 100% my favorite that the high-end world of makeup has to offer. They come in a lot of different shades. So whether you're looking for something more peachy, more pink, more mauve, something with a little bit of shimmer, Benefit has a bunch of different shades of blush and they come in the box. Here I have the Benefit Blush Bar Palette, which I don't think is available anymore, but this is just what I have to show you guys when it comes to Benefit Blushes. These are some of my favorite. Dandelion and California are beautiful shades. These two in the middle, Rockator and Gold Rush, have a little bit more of a sheen to them. I know it sounds weird, but I also really love the smell of Benefit Blushes. I feel like the smell has never changed, and it's just so nostalgic because Benefit was like one of those brands that I was really into when I was first in to makeup and it just smells like 
my early makeup days. I love how they smell. <laughs> Another really amazing high-end blush that gets me so excited every time I talk about them, and I don't know why I don't own more, are the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12-hour blushes. I have a mini one in the shade Party, and this is my most used blush in my whole makeup collection. These Tarte Amazonian Clay blushes are so beautiful. They go on so easy. They are so long-lasting. I can't tell you guys, I could literally like wet my face, and I feel like this wouldn't go anywhere. It is such a long-lasting blush. Another line of blushes that comes in so many shades, whether you want something lighter, something more on the deep side, peaches, something a little bit more bronzy, reds, pinks, they literally have so many different colors. This particular shade, which is called Party, is more of like an everyday pinky nude shade. I would say if you guys wanna wear blush, but if you don't want something too crazy or like a bright pop on the cheek, this is the one that I would go for. My favorite high-end highlighter, well, one of my favorite highlighters high-end highlighters is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighting Duos. Fenty just does everything so well. I feel like Rihanna really thinks about every single aspect of a product that she releases. I love the component, but I think my favorite part is that you are getting two highlighters. I love the concept of a highlighting duo because one of them is going to be a little bit more on the muted side. It's going to give you a little bit more of that glow from within. And then the other side has like that bright metallic highlighter, which I am wearing today on my cheeks. Rihanna just thought about everyone, not only in terms of shade rage, which you know she kills every time. These highlighting duos come in a lot of shades as well, but also about like the user friendliness of the product. Who's gonna like what types of formulas? What formula is going to be best for which occasion? So when I'm going to school or when I have more of a day-to-day -day look, I will use this highlighter here, which is Lightning Dust, and this is going to be a little bit more of that muted glow from within. But when I'm filming a video or I'm going out or taking photos, Photos. When I just want that bright pop of highlight, I will use something like this, which is a fire crystal. My next favorite highlighter ever is Ofra Rodeo Drive. I wasn't sure if Ofra was considered like a high-end brand. I really don't really know where to draw the line between like high-end and indie or like drugstore and indie, but I would consider this a high-end brand just because the price point is a little bit more up there. And I do believe Ofra is sold at Ulta as well, I think. This is my favorite highlighter for when I want something super super blinding, super gold on the cheek, but it's not too dark for my skin tone. I love this highlighter. As you guys can see, I've hit major pan. I'm so happy I still have a lot more to go through, but I think this is the most gorgeous design. The formula is truly incredible. It's not glittery, but it still packs so much of a punch. I just dip my finger in so lightly, and that is what it looks like on my middle finger right there. Although I do really love my Fenty highlighter that I have on today, the Fenty one, at least the shade that I personally have tends to lean a little bit more icy, so I only wear it with specific makeup looks. I feel like Rodeo Drive has that perfect like champagne-y, gold, glowy undertone. I definitely can get more use out of this one, and if you guys are into something really metallic, really out there that is going to give you a beaming, beautiful highlighter every time, I would recommend the Ofra one. For setting spray, the one that I want to recommend is MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus. Now, I know this isn't technically like a setting spray. This isn't going to be like Urban decay all nighter or anything like that but at the end of the day this is just my personal favorite way to set my makeup I really prefer this fixing spray because I feel like it's lighter on the skin it's not gonna have any alcohol in it a lot of the time setting sprays tend to have a little alcohol in it because that's how they kind of like suck your face up to keep it on all day this is really like the most beautiful hydrating feeling spray I love how it melts all the powders into the skin the skin looks so beautiful and natural when you're done with this and although it's not technically a setting spray I do feel like it prolongs the wear of my makeup I sprayed this on top of my skin today and it just has such a beautiful natural look to it if you go heavy-handed on the powder fix plus will definitely save you okay so we're almost at the end of this video I have a lot of lip products to share with you guys though high-end lip products are something that I really like I just I don't know why. I feel like I just am really attracted to high-end lip products and I have a lot of them to share with you guys today. So first starting off with lip liner, no surprise, my favorite high-end lip liner is from MAC. These are really great. This one right here is just their classic lip pencil in the shade Boldly Bare. Really creamy, really easy to sharpen and for being a wooden pencil that you have to sharpen, I feel like a lot of the times other wooden pencils can be like a little rough. They could tug on your lips. These are so creamy and smooth. I've had this one since December 
November and I've sharpened this a ton and I still have a lot left. So I definitely would recommend the MAC lip liners for a high-end option. And sticking on the MAC theme, these are some of my favorite lipsticks. They make these incredible powder kiss lipsticks that have such a unique formula. I feel like I won't be able to properly describe the formula to you guys. I'm just gonna say if you can get to a local store, try out these powder kiss lipsticks. They are some of the creamiest lipsticks that I have tried while still looking like airbrushed on the lips. They do have a powdery feeling on the lips, but not drying. They're almost just like, airbrushed, almost like cushiony. They really are so unique and hard to describe, but I definitely recommend checking them out if you can. The two shades that I have right here are 314 Mullet Over, which is like a beautiful peachy nude, of course. And then I also have the shade Impulsive, which is like more of a brownie nude. My other high-end lipstick recommendation are the Anastasia Matte Lipsticks. A lot of people find these to be really matte and a lot of people don't like these. I personally love the one that I've tried. This is the lipstick that I'm wearing today and this is their matte lipstick in the shade Peachy. I find these to be personally very comfortable. I find them to be very long wearing. I love the packaging. Anastasia, of course, is like one of my favorite makeup brands ever. I love everything that they release. A lot of people don't like this formula, but I think it's so comfortable. I think it glides on so smoothly. I think the issue is that when you first get these lipsticks, they are a little bit tough, but once you kind of like break them down, they just start gliding on the lips. They're very full coverage. They last a very long time and again the shade peachy is my favorite so the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about today are lip glosses I have two formulas that I want to talk about one being very easy and sheer and the other one being more pigmented so the more pigmented gloss are the Anastasia Beverly Hills glosses I always say that these glosses are almost like liquefied lipsticks they just have a glossy finish these have so much pigment you literally could do like one swipe and it coats your whole lip this one right here I have in the shade Kristen and I like this formula a lot. I do feel like this formula tends to be the slightest bit sticky but with that being said it is also long wearing and that color does grip onto your lips for a long time throughout the day. And of course my absolute favorite formula of lip gloss ever. I'm sure you guys know. Definitely go ahead and guess right now before I say it because I'm sure more than half of you already know what I'm gonna say but my favorite formula of lip gloss ever are the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bombs. I cannot rave about these lip glosses enough. These are really the best lip gloss ever. They they are a little bit more on the sheer side, but they provide such a beautiful tint. They are so amazing for layering on top of something else. They make your lips look so wet and juicy and beautiful, and they are not sticky at all, and they are just so comfortable. The two that I have right here are Fenty Glow, which is gonna be a little bit more warm and rosy, as well as Fussy, which is more on the pinky side, and I can't say enough good things about these. I don't know what else to say besides that they are just the best lip glosses ever. If you guys could take one thing from this video, get a Fenty lip gloss because you will not regret it. I promise you that. All right, you guys, so that is gonna complete my high-end makeup starter kit video for you. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. Definitely make sure to let me know if you have any questions about these products or products that maybe I didn't mention that you want my opinion on. Definitely make sure to leave me a comment down below because I love helping you guys out and offering you guys my opinions and recommendations. But that is going to be everything for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave. I would love to have you guys here as part of my little YouTube fam. If you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, click that notification bell down below and you'll get notified every single time that I upload a new video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and of course I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!